for this opportunity to join to join together with people around the world, Heavenly Father, to pray for those who are in distress and trouble. And there is distress and trouble all over the world today, but we want to concentrate on Kenya and Israel today, Heavenly Father. And we know that um, you know the solutions for these problems, Heavenly Father. The problem with Israel has been widely um, been widely disseminated. We know what's going on. We know some of what's going on there. But things are so twisted, Heavenly Father. Things have gotten so twisted, Heavenly Father, that um, we pray for Israel. And we pray for Israel to come to know Yeshua, Heavenly Father. With Yeshua leading them, there will be victory, Heavenly Father. And so we pray for them. But we pray also for Kenya, which is having terrible problems, Heavenly Father, with their government, with corruption. And this is not exactly um, well known in the around the world. It doesn't make the news. Heavenly Father, but we pray for the people of Kenya. I pray for Paris, who visited family there for a month and a half, and she is so distressed she doesn't even want to talk about it, about what her trip was like, Heavenly Father. All she could say was pray. Pray that the uh, government will be healed and changed. And so, Heavenly Father, we just, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity. We repent of our sins and we pray that through that repentance, you will hear our prayers, Heavenly Father. We just thank you and love you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer. Thank you, Don. God bless you. Praise God. And welcome, Jimmy, from Uganda. Thank you, brother. Always a pleasure to have you aboard. And uh, yes, again, the focus is today on Kenya. And uh, so there will be a focus on Israel. So you can see from this very first graphic, a wonderful uh, graphic that spells out all that is an issue, violence, pride, greed, disobedience, unbelief, innocent bloodshed, anger and revenge. Wow, this is talking about a lot of nations as well as Kenya. Psychological trauma leadership, a spirit of hatred, pain, corruption, witchcraft, idolatry, defilement of pastors, and tribalism. Wow. Yes, we just thank Anthony who put this together. We just pray, God willing, he will be on shortly. He has such a heart for Kenya. We pray also for Bishop John Belinda, who's back in Kenya now. God willing, he'll be on. And um, we just lift this up. Above all, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're with us. I thank Susan for putting this all together. Praise God. Whew. What a, what a key time and what an honor to be able to intercede and pray for our brothers and sisters wherever they're located. So now let's look at the next slide. Yes, this just gives you an overview of what's taking place today in one's private prayer closet, in a prayer group, in a church service today, perhaps all across his nation. Yeah, Kenya is his nation as it is South Africa, America, Australia, and Finland, and France. It's his nation across his nation. And with intercessors in other nations, that's many of us that are joining here that are not from Kenya. We are participants who are taking time with the Holy Spirit to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek his face. This is just what Donna prayed, to confess our sins, to turn from our wicked ways and to truly repent. And you know, as we do this, we are cleansing the bride. Today is also cleansing the bride day. It has a different uh, flavor to it, if you will, but it's the process also of cleansing the bride when we hold a global day of repentance. And so we believe that the combined action of humble repentance in Kenya, as well as all across the globe, will send a powerful message which the Lord will hear in heaven. And in his mercy, he may then forgive our sins in Kenya and heal our land. 
Praise God, praise God. Yes, and welcome everyone who's just joined us. Praise God, this is wonderful. Well, praise God, let's look at the next slide. That's just the overview here. Shortly, we're gonna really direct some prayers towards Kenya. And this you all know, by the way, you're welcome to these slides. These are wonderful teaching slides. I mean, I say they're wonderful because they contain a lot of scripture. This classic one is in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. Many of us know 14, but look what 13 says. This is God's solution to heal any nation. You can heal Malawi, you can heal Uganda, you can heal Algeria, you can heal Italy, you can heal Russia or Canada, or et cetera. But look at 13, it says, if I, now this is the Lord God Almighty speaking to Solomon 3,000 years ago, but it's true today. If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, well, guess what? Pestilence includes moral pestilence. That's going on in every nation now. Moral pestilence. When God sends moral pestilence, he is allowing this wickedness because, look at the next verse, if my people... That's you and me on this call, listening to the call, which is being live streamed and recorded. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, that's number one. Pray, that's second. Seek my face, that's the third thing he is asking. And turn, that's repentance, that's the fourth step. Turn from their wicked ways. Then, T-H-E-N. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. And guess what? You and I need to preach this. We need to teach this in all of our churches, all of our Bible studies, all of our prayer teams. It needs to be clear that there is a godly solution that's beyond politics. It's beyond people. So this is so important. You can use it in your prayer group right now. You can use it in your nation right now. We have several nations that are already on this. So in that sense, it's a global call. Well, let's look at the next slide. This is, we have a number to go through today and I wanna to get to the heart of it. So you'll get to pray shortly. Here's one other big picture of what we do every week. Thanks to Susan and Dion in South Africa and those that join us. We are doing these various Zoom calls. One is to Africa that we will be doing tomorrow. One we did yesterday to Australia. Today we're doing this global day of repentance on focusing on Kenya. But we do this to perf quote perfect holiness in the fear of God. That's a direct statement from 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. And the big picture why we do this is set forth for you and me in Ephesians 5, verse 27. He is our soon coming bridegroom, and he calls us all to cleanse, to be zealous, really, to be cleansing as his bride. He calls us to be a bride. And there's no condemnation in Christ. He calls us to be zealous to repent. This is from Revelation 3, 19. Zealous to repent. And then in verse 20, to dine with him. And Revelation 3, 21, to be an overcomer. You and I are called to be overcomers, to sit with him. Look at this promise. As he overcame and sat down with his Abba Father. So isn't it a joyful thing, number one, that you get to go to heaven believing in him, but secondly, you get to sit with him as he also was an overcomer and he sat down with his Abba Father. Praise God. This other scripture, I'm just reading it into the record here. This is from 2 Corinthians 6, 
verses 16 all the way through 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. In the New King James, it says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you, now he's speaking to each one of you on the call right now, you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I'll dwell in them and walk among them. I'll be their God. They shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what's unclean. I will receive you. I'll be, look at this. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So that's what we're doing today. And praise God, we got Pastor Anthony with us. Pastor Anthony, let me just ask you for a prayer for uh, Kenya. Start us off, brother. Whatever's in your heart, going ahead. Situation, physical. Yes. Okay. Let us just let us just bow down and pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this day for the gift of repentance you have given us. We thank you for allowing us to see another day as a church and even as the nation of Kenya and this day of global repentance that we have been waiting for. Lord, I know it has taken the hand of God to accomplish this day for us to be in your presence, just to bring our nation back to you, to bring the church back to you, to bring our family, to restore calm and peace in the land and in the nation of the world. We thank you for also the gift of salvation as we repent what has been happening in our nation, Kenya, that this day is making a turning point according to your word in Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, that there's going to be a refreshment, there's going to be a restoration, there is going to be a healing of families and the nation. Father, we give you all the glory and honor. May you speak to each and every nation that is being represented on this platform. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for your word in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 to 14. That Jehovah, may you heal our land, may you heal the families for the glory and honor of your name. Receive all the praise and honor. For in the name of Jesus, we believe and pray. Amen. Amen. What Amen. a beautiful prayer. Right on, brother. I love it when you Thank pray. You. That was perfect. Thank you. Praise God. Praise yes. God. Well, yes, Amen. let's move to the next slide. And this just gives you a big picture of what we're going to do today, God willing. Parts of which we've already done. We've had an opening prayer. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We looked at God's solution in his word to heal a nation. That's Second Chronicles 7, 13, 14 that Pastor Anthony just spoke about. And we mentioned the truth that the risen Christ supports us as he's the soon coming bridegroom, he shows us in Ephesians 5 how he's presenting us to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. The other thing that we do each week on these Cleansing the Bride Zooms is that we see that those who are participating are seen by him as a leaf of the tree. Yes, yes, for the healing. Yes, yes, the tree of life, the healing of that nation. So Anthony is a leaf on that tree today. Yes, we talk about this in Revelation in the future, but it's also for today that he is a leaf, a strong leaf, I would say, for the healing of Kenya. Yes, and it's the tree of life, which is always victorious. Praise God. Praise God. So shortly, we'll have a private 
three minutes to remove whatever may be in the way for your prayers later. And then I'll also, God willing, have a brief word on God's gift of repentance. It's all based on scripture. And then you'll be blessed by a communion that Susan does each week in um, our African Neil's call. She's going to do one today, which we believe will be part of the healing of Kenya. And then we will focus directly on these prayers in Kenya and invite your prayers as an intercessor if you're in Kenya or in another nation. Then I would also show you at the bottom of this agenda for today, joy and fellowship. Joy follows repentance. Joy follows repentance because we come together as a bride. We come together as the body of Christ. We come together as the ecclesia. There's no distance because we all have the Holy Spirit. And we are not in competition. We're in unity, as it says in Ephesians 4, verse 3. We are endeavoring to keep the unity of the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace. That's what we're doing today. So praise God. Let's look at the next slide. So this will be private so that you can remove whatever might be in there that might block your, your prayers for Kenya. Look at, for example, Psalm 66, 18. It says, if there's iniquity in your heart, the Lord won't hear your prayer. So we want to make sure if you have been in some argument with your neighbor just yesterday and there's a residue of that in the way, you will now have three minutes privately with the Holy Spirit, your teacher, to just look at that and remove it. If you wish, you have a free will to either remove it or not, but I'll say as you remove it, you get more and more cleanse. It's a blessing. Whenever you confess a sin like that, he will forgive you. That's 1 John 1, 9. And then you can take the next step and say, you know, I just want to get rid of this whole pattern that I've had for years, going back to even when I was a teenager or a child. Would you help me, Lord, remove it? And that's a way by which you and I become more holy as he's holy. All of this leads to this truth. It's in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Yes, you could pray, but if you're not in a good place, it's not going to count. It won't get off the ground. It's in removing whatever needs to be removed, cleansing that your prayers get powerful to the Lord. So I'll be quiet. I'll check back in in three minutes. This is private time with you and the Holy Spirit teacher. Check to see if there's anything that needs, he would recommend you be removed. And God bless you.
Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. And uh, now let's look at the next slide. You know, this is the teaching slide for you and for me. It's not even complete. We could take another whole page or two and add some more scriptures. More scriptures that show you that God's gift, of course, his number one gift is his blood on the cross. That was number one. But shortly or right behind it is the gift of repentance, the gift of forgiveness, repentance is the number one and only way by which you come in the kingdom so that no longer are we looking at the old stale religion which was in so many ways man directed we're looking directly into the kingdom through his gift of repentance and you find that in matthew 4 17 and mark 1 15 the very first word when Jesus knew that it was time to preach, he had learned that John the Baptist had been arrested and was in prison. He had already defeated, for 40 days, he defeated Satan in the wilderness. Now he went back to Galilee and he knew it was time to begin to preach. And his first word could have been, love your neighbor. His first word could have been, shalom. His first word could have been, peace. Instead, you and I know his first word was repent. And that's what we have to do when we are, we are giving the good news to people also. We need to show them the goodness of God, what he has done, so that they then will repent from the world, from the flesh, from their own agenda, from their selfish ways, their ways that they think are proper, or that they have to do to get by, to be corrupt or gain control or whatever they're doing out of their own ego. You and I know that's not gonna work. They have to return to God, they have to repent. And that's so, so much of a gift. It's the one way into his kingdom which gives you eternal life. So I just hope you will take this page and you will teach from it. We also looked at that second one, repent to cleanse from all sin strongholds. We all have old patterns, old patterns that you were brought up with, maybe in your family. And as a child, before you knew the Lord, you took on an attitude or a way by which you treated people or looked at things. All of that is a false filter from the truth of God's word. And he now calls us to be partakers of his holiness. And you use repentance, prayer time with him. You can do it alone. You can do it in a group. You can do it in a repentance service in a church, as long as there's privacy. And it's all about being honest with him and saying, Lord, I want to remove it. I want to clean up. I want to be more like you. So there's many different verses we could have looked at, but that's 2 Corinthians 7.1. And I will also show you this third one, 
Repentance opens up a new level of praise to know him more and more. The more that you repent, the more that you see how he loves you, the more you want to get close to him, and the more you want to keep repenting as a personal, we can even call it a discipline every day. In other words, you see something and you go, you know, I don't need to do that again. I really want to get rid of that. I don't need to get angry. I don't need to get jealous. I don't need to get um, overwhelmed with food or whatever. Whatever your issue is, you can remove that. And you cleanse through repentance. So I just hope you will use this page. You can teach this. If I can teach it, you can teach it. These are some of the scriptures. There's many more in terms of the gift of repentance. Maybe I'll mention one more that's not on here. It's in the book of Mark, chapter 6. In Mark, chapter 6, verse 12, you don't have to be a theologian to understand what happened. It says, then they, that's the disciples, then they went out and preached, guess what? Repentance. Yes. Well, if that's what the Lord asked them to do then, he's asking you and me to do that also. Susan just posted this in the chat. Yeah, that's number one. In other words, he didn't say, oh, go on out and have him build a building or go on out and um, plant a crop. He said, no, go on out and preach repentance. And that's what they did. They went out in twos. Or, and uh, guess what? In verse 13, we see what happens when you preach repentance. Mark 6, 13 shows you that immediately there were miracles there were healings, there were deliverance. So immediately following repentance, when you preach it, there is a move of God that we could call deliverance, we can call healing, whatever you want to call it. It is what we need to do all over the place, including, of course, in Kenya. We're focus focusing today on Kenya. So use Mark 6, 12 and 13 teach from it and use it, put it into practice. It was not just for those disciples 2000 years ago, it's for you in Uganda, it's for you in Kenya, it's for you in Malawi, it's for you in the state of Washington, USA, it's for you in the state of Arizona, it's for you in Zimbabwe, it's for everyone on the planet that knows who the Lord is. Just use it, use his word. It's powerful. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. And so we're blessed now to have communion by our dear sister, Susan. Go on ahead, Susan. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, I just want to share this link with Linda quickly. She's looking for the link. Oh, dear. Not that one. The other one. <laughs> Sorry, Linda, where are you? Here we go. She wants to join us. Okay. Um. Yeah. Glad to see you all on the call. I'm excited for what's going to happen today and for what God is going to do. And I trust the communion is actually going to set the atmosphere so that we can be ready to pray, so that we can really experience the presence of the Lord and understand what He is doing while we pray. Now, last week during the African Neil School, when we also focused on Kenya, I focused on intercession specifically, and that Jesus is our intercessor. He's standing for us between us and God, and He's interceding for us. His blood is crying out on our behalf. His blood is crying out better things, the Bible says, than what the blood of Abel is crying out. Because the blood of Abel and thus also every person on this earth who has ever been murdered or treated unfairly or anything like that, and blood for innocent people was shed, their blood cries out revenge. 
They cry out to God and say, don't forget about me. Remember me. Hear my voice. Remember that I've been treated unfairly and my life has been cut short. All those kind of things. But Jesus' blood is coming to say, he's interceding, he's standing in the gap and he says, it's okay, I shed my blood on your behalf. Whatever happened to you, I will uh, make recom recommend, uh, recompense it. That's the word, recompense. In other words, he will make amends. He will cover it, he will deal with it, he will repay it, restore, all of that. So if you are being treated unfairly. Trust in the blood of Jesus to come and heal you, set you free, bring restoration, all of those things. Now, today specifically, I also want to focus on that it's our conscience that's being washed by the blood of Jesus. And our con conscience is washed from dead works. Now, any sinful deed, doesn't matter how small it is, it's a form of a dead work. In other words, your works that you do in the flesh, that means nothing. It's not going to get anywhere. It eventually will, re will lead to death. It means that it's dead works. It will vanish away eventually. There won't be any thing coming from it or anything like that. But our conscience is being washed. We are being cleansed by the Lord's blood so that we can do works that will continue even after we pass away from this earth. Our works will still continue doing the work and still bless people and still um, bring the message across. If you think of, say for instance, Billy Graham, he has passed away for a couple of years now. Um, Oral Roberts has passed away for quite a number of years already. But their works, the things that they've done, continues. It outlives them. That people know their names even today. Take Smith Wigglesworth. It's like two or three hundred years now already that he's passed away. Sorry, I don't know the exact years or dates or anything. So I please <laughs> don't send me a message afterwards. But he's passed away for at least a hundred plus years already. And people still read his books. And I've even heard of a message today of somebody that read his book and the Lord turned that person's life around by just reading the book of what uh, Smith Wigglesworth wrote years ago. So God can use your works and change things. He cleanses you. He renews you. The Spirit or well, the words that we speak when we speak God's word is spirit and life. Like Jesus said, the words that I speak to you in John 6 is spirit and it's life. And life carries on. Life causes growth and all those kind of things. So that is the purpose of the blood and what Jesus has done for us. He's interceding for us. It continues. It doesn't stop. And in Luke 24... Verse 46 and 47, Jesus said specifically to his disciples, he says, Thus it was written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And then there's that little colon, meaning I'm going to explain to you why it was necessary. He says that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. In Christ's name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. In other words, it started it in Israel. It started in the beginning with the Jewish people, but it continues now. It didn't stop there. It carries on. If I take myself, for instance, the um, in the book of Acts, chapter one, Jesus says, until the the furthermost parts of the world. Now, I'm in South Africa. I'm one of the furthermost parts of the world. I'm at the bottom part of Africa, <laughs> right here at the end of it. So the Lord has actually brought that message right down to Africa in various ways and different ways of sending missionaries and all those things. And the main calling is that repentance and remission of sin should be preached. 
Now, the ministry that we are supporting today and what the vision that we have is all about repentance. But for communion purposes, I want to focus on the word remission a little bit. Now, if you heard the word remission before, they normally use the word for a cancer patient that they say that after treatment that the person is in remission. That means that there's no evidence of that cancer cells or anything that can be found in that person's body at that point. Now, the medical term is never to say that you are healed. The medical term is just you are in remission. The chances of it coming back is good. You could get it again and all those kind of things. But if you uh, use that same word and that same idea and concept now in the way that Jesus said it, um, that word remission also means forgiveness, but it, the word remission is also a, a deeper word than just forgiveness. It's easy to say to somebody, yes, I forgive you, but the word remission really means that all evidence of sin has been removed from your life. So through forgiveness of sins, Jesus' blood washes us in, in such a way that we are so cleansed and washed and purified and made holy that there's not supposed to be any evidence of any form of sinful behavior ever be found in your life again. And that's why it's a baptism of repentance. Because you go through the baptism and you get washed during that baptism and it's after you repent it. So repentance and remission of sins go together. The one You can't really preach the one without the other. And the Lord said to me, somewhere between forgiveness and repentance is where the power of the blood of Jesus starts taking effect in your life. So you can't just keep on repenting and not forgiving. And you can't just keep on forgiving and not repenting. Those two needs to go together. We need to get to a point where we uh, forgive others their sins and we receive the forgiveness for our sins from the Lord and we repent and change our lives and walk a complete different way. And in that process, the blood of Jesus steps in and he forgives you, he cleanses you, he heals you, he delivers you, and he makes you holy and he removes even the, the consequence of that sin out of your life. He removes the evidence, he removes the, the memories, all that, the pain, everything goes eventually. So when you have communion, you need to really sit and remind yourself of this. Because when you eat the body, eat the bread, you remind yourself of Jesus' body being broken. And when you eat or drink, sorry, drink the blood, drink the wine, drink the grape juice, or take the cup, all those kind of concepts, it's supposed to remind you that I'm in remission of sins. I'm supposed to be cleansed, healed, delivered, made whole, set free. So when you have communion, first of all, it is to say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. But also then to go and grant others forgiveness, to show the love of the Lord, to go and preach the message, bring it out and to worship the Lord and thank him for what he's done. So communion becomes a joyful time. It becomes a fellowship time. It becomes a family time and all of that. Now, I just want to go quickly into this remission idea a little bit. I just want to focus on Hebrews 9 a little bit. Um, Hebrews 9 from verse 6 onwards says, Now when these things uh, were ordained, he's talking about the elements in the first tabernacle in the Old Testament. The priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplished the service of God. But into the second, in other words, the holiest of holies, the priest could go into the holy place. But into the second, which is the holy of holies, only the high priest could go in there once a year. Not every year or not every day or anything like that. It was only once a year. And that was during the, um, the celebrations of the Peshach and Day of Atonement and all those things that the high priest was allowed once a year to go into the Holy of Holies, 
not without blood. And he offered it for himself and for the errors or the sins of the people. That is doing intercession. That is what a high priest does. He comes before God and he intercedes and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is what Jesus prayed for us. That is what the high priest should be doing. That's why he brings the blood as an offering before God and he poured it on the mercy seat. In other words, the mercy seat is to say that God grants you mercy, he gives you um, forgiveness, and you will be covered by the blood for a year. Now, the Bible says, if you read the rest of Hebrews as well, he says that by uh, the blood of bulls and goats, you cannot be cleansed permanently. You can only be cleansed for a year or be covered really for a year. And that's where the word atonement comes in because it's a covering. Um, but when it comes by the blood of Jesus, we are being cleansed forever, once and for all. Now, verse 8 in Hebrews 9 says the Holy Ghost signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. In other words, the way into the holiest of holy places wasn't manifest. It wasn't revealed or anything. We couldn't go in there while the first tabernacle was yet standing. And that was a figure or a prophetic symbolism. Um, the Bible also says in some of the translations, it's a shadow for the time then present. It's a shadow of the things to come in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. In other words, the conscience is what it's where our problems are happening. It's in the seat of the conscience where we actually have a wickedness stored inside of us when we are um, just born in the flesh, when we're not born again by the Holy Spirit yet. Then you have that wickedness, that evilness, that twistedness, confusion in your heart. And you don't really understand the difference between being holy and being wicked and evil or any of that. And the blood of animals could not cleanse you. It could not make you perfect. It could not make you holy. It only happens by the blood of Jesus. And that's what 11, verse 11 onwards says, but Christ came as a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. In other words, that more perfect tabernacle, that means his own body. He came by his own body. Hebrews 10 verse 5 says a body was prepared for him. It's not made with hands. In other words, nobody could make it with their hands. The body was formed in the womb of uh, Mary until Jesus was born and birthed as a baby. And it says, that is to say, not of this building. Now he's talking about the tabernacle again, because the normal physical tabernacle was made by ants. It was people who built it that put it together. Hebrews 10 verse 20 further carries on. He says, um, he consecrated the way for us through his flesh or through the veil which is to say his flesh in other words by breaking his body by letting a, or allowing it to be ripped apart he actually opened up the way that we could get to God that's why Jesus said you cannot come to the father unless you come by me in other words through communion through a time in the presence of Jesus is what helps you to come into that holy of holies, of holiest places that you can enter in. And it's because of what Jesus has done. It's through his flesh. It's through the veil that was ripped apart. And yes, verse 12, it says, Neither by blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Like the high priest also could only enter once. Jesus entered once into the holy place with blood, 
having obtained eternal redemption for us. And that is what John 20 verse 17 says as well. Jesus said to Mary Magdalene when he met her at the grave after he was resurrected. He says, I'm going to my father and your father. And he says to the um, to Mary to go and tell the disciples he hasn't gone to the father yet. He's about to go, but they must go and wait for him. He will meet them a bit later. So Jesus went to the Father and he presented his own blood on the mercy seat and we were forgiven. The wrath of God has been kindled, it's been covered, it's been, um, uh, the word is a peace, I think. In other words, God is not angry at us anymore because every time he wants to get angry at our sinful behaviors and everything and twistedness and what's going on, then he looks at the mercy seat, he looks at the blood of Jesus and he says, you are forgiven. And then that calms down his anger again. So he doesn't get angry at us or anything. He looks at the blood and he says, you are forgiven. And it all happened and came together also when Jesus actually died on the cross, he says, behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks rent. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and he gave up the ghost. That veil concept keeps on coming through. Even in 2 Corinthians 3, it tells us when we... Um, stay in the old tabernacle process when we stay in the uh, old testament laws and all of that he says when moses is read that's what he means in other words when you stay in the old testament there's a veil hanging over your eyes over your heart and you can't get the insight that's why people that's um, just focusing on the laws and all of that they are religious they cannot come to become born again they cannot understand it second corinthians 3 then later says but when they turn their face towards jesus and they look at him then that veil lifts and their eyes open up and the light starts shining in and then they become like as in looking in a mirror changed from glory to glory and others change from the old glory to the new glory that jesus brought through the cross, through his body, through his death and resurrection and all of that. And that veil concept stays there. It keeps us giving us that same idea. And that's why for me, Hebrews 10 verse 20 is so special as well, because he consecrated the way. In other words, he made a way open for us to come to the Father That way is open forever, eternity. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can block us. Nothing can prevent us from entering in or anything like that. It's only if we believe the lies of the enemy, if we listen to the enemy or anything like that. And if we are deceived, that's the only way that we can be prevented. But Jesus made a way and nothing by no means can stop it. Nothing can take it away. The way is open for you at all times. And you can receive remission of sins and you can come in repentance at any time you want. There's nothing that says that you cannot do it or you need to be in a church or a pastor needs to pray for you or a bishop needs to lay his hands on you or whatever. There's so many things that people come up with and whatever. And I don't even want to go into all the church religious nonsense that comes up. Jesus says the way is consecrated. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. It is available for you at any time. And it's always available. You can come at any time. So Colossians 2 now comes and tells us, he says, you being dead in your sins. Now here comes the dead works idea. You were dead in your sins and the circumcision of your uncircumcision of your flesh. As he quickened, that word quickened also means revitalize, make awake. In other words, lift the veil, open your eyes, understand, get inside, all of that. He quickened us together with him. 
having forgiven you all trespasses. That word trespasses also means rebellion in the Hebrew language. And here's the part, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. And it's contrary to us. In other words, it's standing against you and it's there to condemn you. And he took it out of the way and he nailed it to the cross. Now what that means, that blotting out the handwriting, that ordinances list of all the sins that you've done, all the things that you've done wrong, anything like that, it's like being written in ink. It can't be rubbed out or wiped out or anything like that. But if you bring it to the cross and you lay it at the feet of Jesus, the blood of Jesus starts dripping on that handwriting, on that list. And you all know if you get blood dripping on ink, on paper, eventually it be such a messy business that you can't read anymore what was written there. Even if you wipe the blood away, you wipe the ink away with that. You can't see anymore. And that is really what it means. He blots out the handwriting of ordinances that's against us. That list that says you are guilty, it's the list exists. The list is there, but it's covered by the blood of Jesus. That's the atonement. He covers it. He says, you are forgiven. I wipe it out. I wash it away. And he takes it out of the way and he nailed it to the cross. And by nailing it to the cross, it means that he stood in my stead. He's standing on the cross. He laid his life down instead of me having to pay the price. He's my intercessor. He's the one that went and did the work. He finished it. He paid the price. He suffered the consequences and everything. He nailed it. He was nailed to the cross. So in other words, his blood cleanses me. His blood wipes out all the ordinances against me, all my sin, everything. So I get to a point where I'm under remission. Hebrews 9 verse 14 says, How much more then shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And that's what Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 also says. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. In other words, you get to a point where you say, Lord, not my will. Let your will be done. In other words, your flesh wants to go to the movies. But in the spirit, you realize I need to stay on the, for instance, this call for Kenya, I need to pray for Kenya, I need to intercede for Kenya, I can't go and do what I want, Lord let your will be done, here I am, I do what you want me to do, not what I want to do, so I present my body a living sacrifice, holy, in other words I'm cleansed, I washed in the blood of Jesus, the word holy means you are separate, set apart, you are washed, you are cleansed, you are pure, you are set apart and you are acceptable unto God. In other words, if you are holy, you become acceptable to God. If you are under the blood of Jesus, you are acceptable to God. You are accepted in the beloved. And then verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Yeah, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, through spending time in the presence of the Lord, spending time in communion, spending time considering all these scriptures, drinking it in, changing your mind, repenting, all of that, you become transformed in a whole different person eventually. And you can't really go back to your old ways anymore. Once you are baptized once you are washed in the blood once you are cleansed and you're walking in a remission of sins and you are forgiven you never go back to your old ways anymore anybody that still does that hasn't really been cleansed and washed or anything like that they don't understand the depth of it so you're not supposed to fall back or be somebody that backslides or anything like that if you really understand 
the depth of the remission of sins and the depth of repentance and the depth of being filled with the Spirit of God and being baptized in the Spirit of God, being baptized in water, meaning you are baptized in the death of Christ and you are raised, excuse me, up with Christ as a new living being, all of that. If you really understand all of that, you cannot backslide. You cannot go back to the old ways. You cannot go back to the fleshly, sinful nature anymore. So overall, once you've really repented and shaken off all the dust from your feet and from your life and everything, you come to a point that Hebrews 10.22 encourages us. He says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. In other words, you've got such a confidence in your heart that God has forgiven you, cleansed you, washed you, everything that you come with boldness. Hebrews 4 tells us, come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain mercy in time of trouble and to get help when you need it. So it all happens when you really understand the depth of what Jesus has been through for you on the cross. And you only really grasp it when you start reading the scriptures and you're having communion and you consider what Jesus has been through for you. So you drink all of that in, you uh, meditate on it, you digest it, you make it part of your life. And your life changes. You being transformed and you renew your mind by repenting, by turning around and walk away from a situation. And you say, I will never, ever do that again. That is true repentance. Repentance is not just to say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. And tomorrow you do it again. And you do it again and you do it again. That's not repentance. Repentance really when you come to a point where you say, Lord, I see I'm I'm wrong. I've done the wrong things. Please forgive me. And then you receive the forgiveness of the Lord. And then you repent and you say, I turn around. I will not do that again. Then you've actually gone through a time and a process of repentance. So we need to come closer to the Lord. Draw near to him with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. There's that sprinkled idea. You are being washed. You are being cleansed. The word sprinkled is also used in the Old Testament, often where they used, for instance, um, hyssop leaves or a bunch of hyssop. They will dip it in blood or they will dip it in water and they will sprinkle it on the people. That symbolized what the true meaning is today for us in the spirit realm when the blood of Jesus is blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances against you. He sprinkles your conscience from that evil conscience that's in us and he takes that away. He removes that out of your heart. You are being washed. You are being cleansed. And then you can really get to a point of remission, not just plain forgiveness, but you are actually in remission. There is no evidence of sin found in your life anymore. And our bodies are washed with pure water, meaning that you have been baptized in the water, in the death of the Lord, but also been washed by the word. Jesus said to Peter, um, it's the water of the word that washes you. He says, by me speaking to you, you all been washed. And um, Ephesians 5 mentions it as well about washed of the water. And in John 13, yes, John 13, um, when Jesus washed their feet, he says, um, if you are washed, if you bathed, you only need to wash your feet. So then you get to a point where you just do small repentance things of, oh dear, I missed it. I forgot that. Um, I'm being, just need to wash my feet again. And that's also a place where we help our brothers and our sisters. We come and we wash their feet and we tell them, I forgive you. I understand you uh, didn't understand what you were doing. I forgive you for what you've done or what you said or how you treated me. And that's why he actually did this also during the 
Passover meal as part of the whole fellowship time that they had in their Pesach time that they had when he revealed the communion to us. So all of this comes together. It's a whole big revelation of understanding that the blood of Jesus and the word that's being spoken over us and the love of God, the spirit of God, when he comes into your life, when you're being baptized, you're being cleansed, you're being washed. And from that place, that concept, that idea is really when we get to a point where we really want to pray and intercede for others. Because now when you are cleansed, you are washed, you understand what others are going through. You understand the pain and the suffering they go through. And now you can cry out as an intercessor before God, like Ezekiel is talking about. God says he's looking for people to stand in the gap for the nation. So he will not destroy it. So we need to be intercessors, coming before the Lord as, as priests and cry out on behalf of our brothers, our sisters, our church, our country, our nation, our uh, family, our village, our town, whatever area you want to cover. You can start small in your own household, your family, and you work it out. And eventually you can even pray for other nations. You can intercede for other nations. And you can cry out before the Lord. And that's what uh, James 5 is also about. That he says, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You are being made righteous. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us. Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin so that we can be made the righteousness of God. So there is that exchange happening at the time of the cross when we come in faith. Lord Jesus says, I take your sin, I give you my righteousness. And then when you've been made righteous, you've been cleansed, washed, all of that, you come to a point where you can cry out for um, other nations, people like we want to do for Kenya today. And you will avail much, the Bible says. It promises you. So I want to encourage you to take some bread. And let's just think on this for a moment for ourselves first. And then think a bit further for your nation. Think about Kenya specifically. All the problems, heartache, pain, everything they're going through. And cry out before the Lord, even there in your quiet moment, asking him to bring them also in as part of the, the family of God, to bring them in under the blood that they can also be washed and cleansed and forgiven. And it's all that they just need to come to a point of understanding. That's all that is necessary. But we need to pray for them that their eyes open up like um, 2 Corinthians 3 says that that veil lifts over their eyes so that they can see. And that is deception. We need them to be delivered from deception. So if we look at the bread, I've got some matzos here in my hand. It says, for I received from the Lord. This is now the Apostle Paul telling us in 1 Corinthians 11. He says, that which I also delivered to you. In other words, he experienced the power and the presence of the Lord, explaining to him the communion. He got a revelation. He got an understanding. He says, now I want to give it to you. He says that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. In other words, he took some matzos, unleavened bread. When he had given thanks... Now, that was his tradition. That was Jesus' way of always taking bread and thanking God for it because he understood that he was the bread that that bread symbolizes. He was the body that was prepared. And he said, thank you, Father, for what this means. Thank you for what this stands. Thank you that I am here. So he gave thanks for the bread. And then he broke it. And then he gave it to his disciples and he says to them, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. 
I love the Amplified that they added that word affectionate. Because it's not just the case of, oh, I remember Jesus died on a cross. Okay, let me have some bread and off I go. No, it's affectionate remembrance. In other words, considering what did Jesus die for? What did he go through? Spend time in his presence. Really drink it in. Make it your own. Make it part of your life. He did this for us, for you and me. So, Lord, I just want to thank you for your body that was broken for me. Your body was ripped apart. If your body wasn't broken, there could not have been any bloodshed. And we thank you for that, Lord. And if there wasn't any bloodshed, there could not be any forgiveness. There could not be any uh, remission of sins. We could not be washed. So the body is just as important as the blood. We cannot separate the one from the other. They go together. When we have communion, we thank you for that, Lord, that we can do it together. Have the body and the blood. Have the bread and the wine. And I thank you for this, Lord. I ask that the revelation and the understanding of this word will come into our lives, into our hearts, and that we will start to really drink this in, make it part of our lives, and understand how we are cleansed and washed and healed and set free and delivered from all our sins, all our wickedness, that our conscience is being cleansed and we can live holy pure lives before you acceptable unto you lord we thank you for that thank you that this body this piece of bread reminds me of all of that and i thank you for what you've been through lord thank you for what you've done i ask you lord to help us to come to a point of repentance and to come to a point of receiving your forgiveness for us in jesus name i pray amen and amen Thank you, Susan, for that beautiful teaching. Uh, Jeffrey, they sang a song because this was a she's Passover. She's, she's got one more piece. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. No problem. She's almost there. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Sorry, Stephen. And thank you, Stephen. <laughs> but yeah, if we look at the cup as well. In Matthew 26, I love to put this scripture of Matthew 26 with 1 Corinthians 11. Because at the, the same way as Jesus took the bread, he also took the cup. And he also gave thanks. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to the disciples. And he says, drink from it. All of you. He says, for this is my blood of a new and a better covenant. In other words, the blood is the, the seal of the new covenant. He made a better covenant. And that is where the Holy Spirit comes in. He gives us the spirit of God. And he says, this ratifies the agreement. Now, blood is what seals a covenant. If there is no blood, and the covenant could not be cut it wasn't valid so the blood had to be shed in order for the new covenant to be made and he sealed it in his blood he says in his blood is being poured out for many but if you study that word many it actually means all his blood was poured out for all but not everybody receives it and that's why the all becomes many because there is a multitude of people that does receive him, that does come to a point where they receive the sacrifice on the cross. They do receive it. They do believe it. They do take it. But there are many also that does not take it. And that's the sad part. And that's why we need to intercede for them to bring in more people into the kingdom of God. And it's poured out as a substitutionary atonement. In other words, for a covering. 
for the forgiveness or rather the remission of sins. The Amplified got the word remission in there as well. It's for the, our forgiveness, our washing, our cleansing of sins. So, Lord, I just thank you for your blood. Thank you for bringing this whole message together. And I ask that you will seal it in our hearts, that you will seal it in our lives, that we will understand the power of your blood, that it will cover us, cleanse us, heal us, deliver us. And I ask, Lord, that this understanding of the word, that this revelation, this insight, everything that you're giving us right now, Lord, that it will become... <laughs> manifest in our lives that we will start seeing it start understanding it and we will start walking in the power of it and even from that point of understanding start praying for our brothers and sisters that are still in the world that's still lost and still don't have the understanding like we're praying for Kenya Lord I bring Kenya before you right now and I ask that you will cleanse them and wash them in your blood and bring them into the kingdom. And in that way you can make peace. Really make peace. In your name Lord Jesus. I thank you Father for it all. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. And Amen. Thank you Susan. That was such a powerful teaching. And you know. One of the things when we do communion, we want to actually think of ourselves sitting at the table of Yeshua. And it was matzah. It was a Passover Seder. And matzah really reflects Yeshua because if you have a piece of matzah, you see it has holes in it. It's flat. It's got bruising in it. And so, you know, he said, I delight to have the Passover. And Susan did such an amazing teaching. And when it talks about the new covenant, that's Jeremiah 31, 31. He says, this is a new covenant that I make with the house of Israel. He didn't say the church. So we have to repent of replacement theology. The ecclesia has been adopted into the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, 31. And it says in that day, all of Israel will know Yeshua. And he says, he'll remember their sins no more. That means the sins of Israel are under the blood of Yeshua. And so there was a song they, they would sing after communion, and I'd like to release this song, Jeffrey, because I think it really applies, if I may. Yes, please. Cleanse us in the blood of Yeshua. Wash us in the waters of your word. Purify us in your fire, Holy Spirit. Fill us with your glory, O Lord. Fill us with your glory. Fill Kenya with your glory. Fill Africa with your glory. Fill Israel with your glory. Fill America with your glory. Fill the nations with your glory. Fill the ecclesia with your glory. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of all our sins as we forgive others and ourselves. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Cleanse us in the blood of Yeshua. Wash us in the waters of your word. Purify us in your fire, Holy Spirit. Fill us with your glory, O Lord. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your glory, O Lord. And I just want to share a testimony, Jeffrey, that is about Africa and Uganda. I got a call from a sister Esther in Uganda with 250 orphans and she sent me a WhatsApp message that she's been so uh, oppressed that she cannot take care of the children so we prayed and we broke the spirit of witchcraft off her and we break 
the spirit of witchcraft off of Kenya and off of Africa, and that demonic stronghold is now broken in the name of Yeshua. And she started coughing that devil out of her and began to praise God and began to pray in the spirit, and even the children did. And on Saturday, I had Pastor David go to Kampala, Uganda. And it's amazing. Esther had a, a baptism. Oh, my God. It's like a portable baptism thing. And she didn't know why she had it. She said, Lord, I, you know, I'm not a pastor. I don't, I don't know why I even have this. And the Lord says, you will be using it. And <laughs> Pastor David came over on Saturday and baptized all 250 children wow. in, in the water. And now they're going to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. So, Lord, we pray for Kenya right now. We break off. We bind up the strong man that has been holding Kenya and Africa captive. Generational witchcraft that we repent for. We break it right now in the name of Yeshua. And we cover all of Africa and Kenya in the blood of Yeshua as Susan. And as the word said, cleanse Kenya. In the blood of Yeshua, wash her in the water of your word, purify her in the fire of the Holy Spirit, raise up an army, Lord, raise up an army in Kenya. We prophesy saw Paul conversions, but we ask you to unify the pastors in Kenya and unify the pastors in Africa and unify them so that we will be one voice to release heaven on earth in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Very powerful. Yes, thank you, Stephen. Let's look at the next slide. We're going to keep focusing on this Kenya. And thank you, Susan, again, that beautiful communion message. Thank you, Stephen, for that beautiful prayer. So this, again, is a good teaching slide for you to get a copy of share with your prayer team. May this go all over the planet. That basically in every nation, their sins, they're going to be listed here on the right-hand side. And there's no condemnation. He invites each of us just to remove these sin strongholds, washing them away with his blood and his word through his spirit. And we become a cleaner vessel, perfecting just, his. Just leave, you'll just leave it there. So look at number one is the failure to follow God's word, which includes to stand with Israel, to preach his repentance and the remission of sins. We're going to deal with that directly. This is just a, a listing now. The second major sin in every nation, personally and nationally, is the shedding of blood. The killing of innocents, including abortion, and then also in euthanasia, which is being promoted, especially in Europe right now, and in the state of uh, Oregon in the U.S. Bloodshed also in racism, hatred, bitterness, and revenge in, in Kenya and other nations here in the U.S.A. And... Then idolatry, which includes witchcraft, which is Stephen just prayed about, pride, greed, and corruption all comes from that personal self, your own self being an idol, and then, of course, sexual perversion. So here we are together in this process, following his eternal word, the risen Christ is bringing us together in these last days as one body. This is set forth in Ephesians 4. One body, one Lord, one faith, based on his entire word in the Bible. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Now, do we have Bishop John Belinda on? Are you on, brother? I miss your voice. Are you able to join us? Go ahead, brother. What's on your heart? We're looking at these key sins in Kenya in a minute, but I also wanted to invite you to come on. Maybe he's just listening. 
Well, at any point, jump on in if you're able to. We we love your presence. And so, okay, we'll wait for that. But yeah, go ahead, Susan. Thank you for the next slide. As we begin to focus again and again on Kenya. Key sins in Kenya. And by the way, and shortly after I list these sins, we're going to then look at uh, a beautiful prophetic word we got from Dion, Susan's husband, last week. So these sins in Kenya can be found in every nation. Bloodshed on the land, including racism and greed and corruption, killing of innocence, hatred, bitterness, revengefulness, failure to stand with Israel, breaking of covenants, idolatry, humanism, witchcraft, sexual perversions, and just above all, failing to follow the good news. We have good news. The hatred, the animosity between the tribes, that's all been handled by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus. And so let me first read this beautiful prophecy we got last week from Dion. He says, I see Kenya stepping from darkness into light. Nothing will stop what God has in store for Kenya. God's hand is over Kenya. Look at this. Kenya will be the first African nation where revival will take place. And the revival fire that's going to spread to all other African nations. Kenya will be known as the city of God's light and will become a rock and pillar for other African nations to lean and stand on. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to listen to this beautiful song by a Messianic Jewish believer in Jerusalem. His name is Baruch J. Harris. He has written this beautiful song called Turn Around. And while you're listening to that, lift up Kenya, any one of these key sins, any one of these that he would put on your heart as an intercessor. Maybe you are there directly. Maybe you are from... Uh, Congo, as our brother Armstrong is. Maybe you're from another nation. Uh, maybe you're listening in. Uh, Edward is with us. Edward McQuamba is with us from Malawi and so forth. And I just saw this chat where my brother John says, it's my pleasure to listen in and pray with you all. That's so good. Praise God. So listen to this beautiful song called Turn Around by Baruch Harris. He's in Jerusalem. And as you listen to the song and seek the Lord and ask him, Lord, what is the sin in Kenya for which I can intercede? How can I intercede? How can I remove that sin in my life? And then how can I remove by intercession that sin in Kenya? So God bless you. We'll check back in after you have spent this time with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. He's your father. He's your brother. He's your comforter and friend. He's your God and He's your lover He will be there till the end If you follow Him, He'll lead you To a place you've never been He made heaven just for you And He wants you to come in Turn around This could be the last time It's a 
time you can't ignore Turn around Shuva 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 Stop and listen to the message From the messenger he sent You said if there is a God Won't someone tell me where he went Messiah died so you could live That's what he said, that's what he meant And he rose to open heaven If we only will repent Turn around, turn around He is knocking at the door This could be the last time It's a time you can't ignore Turn around Shuva 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 Well, repentance is so easy All we have to do is say That we're sorry that we wanted Just to do things our own way but when your way has left us bankrupt Devil says it's time to pay There's another way called Calvary We can fall on his mercy Turn around, turn around He is knocking at the door Listen to the message from the messenger he sent. You said if there is a God, won't someone tell me where he went? He is waiting right behind you. If you just open the door, he once loved you to death, and he wants to love you more. gave me something I want to share that in a minute but I want to first invite anyone else you want to share what the Lord put on your heart as a key sin in Kenya for which you are now interceding go ahead yeah this call is all about you it's not just me Susan and Stephen you're welcome to share what's on your heart if you receive something, sometimes you do, sometimes it'll be in the dream tomorrow night. So I'll share you what I got. And it's really uh, strong. I, I just cry out, Lord, for the killing on the abortions that are going on. In of course, in my own state of California and in the United States, we're really the capital of the 50 states. This is the abortion capital of the United States. And at the same time, Lord, I just pray in Kenya that this incredibly wicked spirit of death and a killing of a live human being, how wicked is that, Lord? Would you drop that, pull that off of all the people in Kenya, pull it down, Lord, that it would not even be thinkable. Then instead a child would be brought fully to life and then adopted if someone didn't want to keep that child for some reason. Let there be a spirit of adoption, just as you, Lord, have adopted us. We're your adopted children. So, Lord, I just pray life would come into Kenya 
there would be a teaching of abstinence. There would be a a sex only within a marriage. There would be no unwanted babies. There would be wanted babies. There would be no abortion. Lord, let this let this deep pagan spirit of Molech going all the way back to Hebrew times, let it be pulled down by you, Lord, sovereignly pulled down in Jesus, Yeshua's holy name. Amen and amen. Anyone else going ahead? What the Lord put in your heart? Going ahead. Kushela baloto, shekela baloto, kashala balete. Yes, go ahead. If you receive something in those that time, go on ahead. And I can maybe just pray on that last point as well, because that's one of the biggest problems that we sit. It's the last point, but I think it's almost the most important point that we've struggled to follow God's gospel. It's the good news, but we don't get it. We don't understand the depth of it. And Lord, I just want to pray for your presence. I want to pray for your revelation, for your spirit to fall, for revival to break out, for people's hearts to really open up in Kenya, in Africa, Lord, all over, even in America, in Israel, in every country in this world, 200 plus nations, Lord. I pray that your spirit will fall and touch the nations, that people will hear your voice, their eyes will open up, the veil will lift from their hearts and from their minds, Lord, and they will start to see and understand what it is all about, that they will throw off all this deception, all these lies and twistedness and confusion that's going on in this world at the moment, Lord. I pray for all the that nonsense to break for your light to shine through. And I speak the words of Genesis 1, and I just say, let there be light in the midst of this chaos, Lord. Let people see your light. Let people see your love. Let them experience your presence. Let them experience dreams, get visions of you, Lord, and just know that you are real, that you are true, that you are the God that we serve, that you are really the only creator God of this universe, that any other God of this earth that people are worshipping and thinking they're praying towards, Lord. I ask that all that nonsense will come to an end, that people's eyes will open up and see who the real Jehovah Elohim really is, who the God of this world and universe really is. And who the creator God is, Lord. And I pray for the reverential fear of your spirit, Lord. That people will start recognizing you, experiencing your presence and understand the depth of your love. That you forgive us, that you love us. And that your goodness and your mercy and your grace will start come and bring a revelation into people's hearts and minds, Lord. If you can give it to me who is basically nothing, Lord. I am nothing in this world. And yet you chose me to have an understanding, to have a revelation. Lord, if you can give it to me, you can give it to anyone. You can really touch people's hearts. And I pray for the youth of Kenya, for the youth of Africa, because if their hearts and minds can grab hold of this, if their eyes can open up, Lord, it will change Africa in a drastic way. I pray for your presence, Lord, and I pray against all these other religious nonsense that's happening in the world, all these lies and twistedness and confusion. Lord, for the sake of anybody taking offense, Lord, I will not go and say the specific religion I'm referring to, Lord, but there's a religion that is really going out to kill people. They are really destroying people, Lord, and they are trying to kill you and kill your move and kill your word. And they think that they're the ones that's going to make it. They're the ones that's the only ones that's going to stay on this earth, Lord. And it is the lie of the enemy. And it's the wickedness and the twistedness of the enemy, Lord. It's actually confusing them and blinding them and confusing the people of this nations of Africa. And I ask, Lord, that your light will shine in the midst of all of this. I say, light be in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Amen. A beautiful prayer, Susan. Beautiful. Anyone else have a prayer? Either. Um, Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead, whoever oh, was going to pray. Oh, this, this is Donna. Have, Heavenly Father, I just raise to you those who are in leadership positions in Kenya. Heavenly Father, you know everyone who is in a leadership position, and there is much corruption in that leadership, Heavenly Father. And we just pray that your spirit will wash over these people and change them, that they will see that if that it, that the power that, that they've let, the power that they have corrupt them and try to serve themselves and their cronies rather than serve the people of Kenya, Heavenly Father, to bring a safe country, a country where there is food for all, where there are jobs, where health care can be obtained, Heavenly Father. As I said, you know everyone who is in a position, and you can use people in positions of power to bring about your word, Heavenly Father. And so uh, we don't understand why these corrupt governments continue, Heavenly Father, but we just pray that you will speak to them, change their hearts, change their minds. And if they are not to be changed, Heavenly Father, then remove them and bring people who honor you into positions of power, Heavenly Father. We just, uh, we, it, it seems so impossible for us as people to change that corruption, Heavenly Father, but nothing is impossible for you. And so we just pray for those who are governing and leading in Kenya, that your spirit will pour out and change them or remove them. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer. Thank you, Donna. Anyone else want a prayer right now? Go on ahead. Lord, we agree in Donna's prayer. And Donna's prayer is not just for Kenya. Donna's prayer is for every nation around the world. We break the corruption, the greed, the deception, the perversion and the pride of all leaders, government leaders in America, in Israel, in Africa, and all of the nations. Oh, Father, the time is now to bring your kingdom reign and rule, your government rule in every nation. And we agree in the prophetic word that was given through Dion concerning Kenya. For the most part, Kenya has been standing with Israel. Kenya has been blessing Israel, and she shall be blessed. But now is the time of purification, Lord, as Donna prayed that these leaders who are dominating the people like bread, and again, it's just not Kenya, it's throughout every nation. And Lord, these are Hamans, and we prophesy the Hamans are coming down in leadership, and you're gonna raise up Mordechai's, and you're gonna raise up Esther's, and you're gonna raise up Joshua's, and you're gonna raise up Devorah's, and we will see righteousness will replace rebellion. Truth will replace lies. Yes, Lord, we will see giving replace poverty. We bind that spirit in Africa and all the nations where their hand is out only to take, but not to give. We prophesy a spirit of giving, that they'll begin to give unto those in need, providing for the orphans, providing for the widows, supporting ministries, and not holding back. And Father, again, we must break generational witchcraft. It must come to an end, idolatry, perversion, and every form of wickedness we break right now in the name of Yeshua, and destroy it by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you that you will purify Kenya, that you'll sanctify Kenya, that you'll consecrate Kenya, just as you did with Nineveh. And Lord, we are praying that spirit of tshuva, that spirit of repentance. If you could take Nineveh, a wicked nation, that had the Amalekite spirit that killed women and children and brought the king into repentance and all of Nineveh and fasting, including the animals. We prophesy that spirit of repentance to come across Kenya, to come across Tanzania, to come across Uganda, to come across every area of Africa and let it extend to every nation. 
Father, the time is now that you are going to reveal your son Yeshua to the world in your time. And when the light comes from his hands and the father's love comes from his heart and he asks every person on the planet one question in their own language, who will you follow and serve? Yeshua, Jesus, or Satan. We pray that all of Kenya will say yes to Yeshua and no to the devil. That all of Africa will say yes to Yeshua and no to the devil. That all of Israel will say yes to Yeshua and no to the devil. That all of America will say yes to Yeshua and no to the devil. And all of the nations will say yes to Yeshua and no to the devil. So Father, we thank you now that you are going to release your holy fire across Kenya and burning up all wickedness. And I know, Lord, that you're going to show those who are being led by the devil when they see themselves very simple choose who you will follow and serve and when the father knows their heart to serve the devil they will have visions burning in hell and they will be terrified and they will not get it out of their brain until they truly repent and the answer susan is the only way to walk remember there's no condemnation for those who are led by the Holy Spirit. You cannot obey the Lord with a religious spirit. We break that religious spirit off of pastors and off of the church. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. Pastors must bring forth the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire into every church service, along with 2 Chronicles 7, 14, so that we will be praying in the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. So we prophesy fresh tongues of fire now across Kenya and Africa and all of the nations in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Stephen. Praise God, praise God. Anyone else before we move on? What a powerful call this is already today. Pastor Anthony. You're such a key person in Kenya. Is there one of these particular sins that is um, on your heart, brother? Praise God. First of all, we we have just to go before the Lord because of the sin of rebellion and violence and disobedience that has been hitting our land. Since last week, we have seen in every county there have been a lot of death happening as a result of the violence that was going on but i'm glad to tell you that as we started going before the lord on monday which was first yesterday there was some protest but it was not that way like the one that happened last week and today i'm happy that i've been seeing uh, messages going online that the general z the generation z have called off the the demonstration they have now communicated to the government which is a plus to us that these prayers have been yielding fruits as dion prophesied last week that kenya we are going to have a great revival it is already being seen in the spiritual realm. We can feel the spirit of revival. The spirit of corruption is being broken down in the name of Jesus. We are <laughs> seeing in every quarter, even in the parliament today, they were saying, Mr. President, you have to separate uh, from yourself friendship and work. And those people have been uh, corrupt in the government. They must go home so that the country is left with the people with integrity. Also, we have seen even them rejecting the salary increment that they were being given. When the country was in a, an economic situation, they were being also uh, given a, a circular that their salary is going to be increased. But today, with one voice, they have said, we don't want that salary increment. We need to serve the people. So this spirit of repentance is bringing a cleansing of our nation, Kenya. And this is going to other parts of Africa. Even other parliaments, they are going to learn from Kenya that it is the people, when they walk in righteousness, the Lord is able to heal the land. 
So I want us just to make a prayer before the Lord. Please. As we, as we go before the Lord this day, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day you have called us into this global day of repentance. Lord, you spoke to us last week that this is a day you are setting apart because of Kenya. And behold, on Monday you gave us Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, that even though you have been wounded, but on this third day you are going to revive us and you are going to move us to another level. Father, as a nation, I repent because of idolatry that was raised in the land of Kenya. I repent because of the spirit of corruption, the spirit of violence and innocent bloodshed, the spirit of anarchy, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of theft that has been happening in our nation. Lord, I repent in the name of Jesus. I pray that today, let there be a turning point in the country, Kenya, a turning point in our leadership, a turning point in the priesthood in the land, Father, any spirit of corruption, any Asherah poles that were raised, any power of witchcraft that was forged against our land and against the people of Kenya, any spirit of rebellion that was even coming to fight the church in the land of Kenya, Lord, I break it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that let there be an awakening in the spirit. Thank you for healing our land, Kenya. Thank you for healing our leadership. Thank you for healing the church, our families. Lord, I repent on behalf of those families who lost their loved ones and even others are nursing wounds in hospitals. Lord, I pray for special grace and special healing and delivering your people from trauma, from anxiety, anger, and bitterness in the name of Jesus. I pray today that let your will be done as I commit each and everyone who is standing on this platform, as your word in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 14, verse 6, says, you do not save by many, but by few who are ready to bring this cry unto you, Lord. We are praying that, Lord, this global day of national repentance will bring fruit that is what in keeping to us repentant. Receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. 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 How beautiful. Jeffrey, I just want to say one thing after the man of God prayed such a powerful prayer. Lord, we bind the spirit of Cain. We bind the spirit of murder right now in Kenya. We bind up the spirit of division. We ask you to unify Kenyans to be one in the Father, to be one in the Son, and to be one in the Holy Spirit, and to be one with each other. Lord, we ask you to comfort those who mourn. Lord, those who are murdered, Father, and they're weeping, I ask for visions of Shemaim of heaven, that they would see their loved ones in heaven in the arms of Yeshua. Comfort those who mourn. And yes, Lord, we must repent for innocent bloodshed. The innocent bloodshed, we bind the spirit of Cain, but we destroy the altars of Molech. And Father, wherever they've been using uh, even uh, blood covenant, unto Satan, we eradicate it in fire, holy fire. And so, Lord, we thank you that, again, uh, what the enemy meant for evil, you're going to turn for good. And in the scriptures, Jeffrey, most people don't realize this. They use it, but what the Lord showed me is when the enemy comes in, comma, the Holy Spirit is the one who comes in like a flood and raises a standard. So yeah. it is yeah. the enemy coming in. It is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are asking you now to minister to those in Kenya and to bring healing, salvation, and deliverance to Kenya. We break off the orphan spirit off of Kenya where there's so many without fathers, Lord. But we ask you to raise up spiritual fathers, spiritual fathers, spiritual fathers within the ecclesia by unifying the pastors and unifying them to come and minister to the families without fathers. And we break off this, uh, this spirit. We break it where men think that uh, these women are trophies to have babies and more babies, but not to be willing to take care of the babies. 
And yes, Lord, we ask you now also to bring forth jobs that Yeshua was a carpenter, Paul was a tent maker. And as I minister to many throughout Africa, I keep telling them, you will feel so much better when you when the Lord will bless the work of your hand. No matter what you do, then you'll be able to provide for your family. So let Kenya be an example for the other nations within Africa, in Uganda, and many other places, so they will see a transformed Kenya that will bring glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we ask for such a move of Kenya to stand with Israel like never before in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. I'm also seeing that our brother in Uganda, Jimmy Ogwan, is on, and your mic is open. Brother, do you have a prayer for Kenya? Go ahead, Jimmy. Yes, uh, praise the Lord. Sorry, I had been traveling, but now I've settled a little bit. Uh, we yes. thank God for the prayers today for Kenya. We thank God for his love for Kenya. And um, let's pray. Uh, Father in heaven, I pray for unity for the body of Christ in Kenya. I also pray for truthfulness, sincerity uh, before you and faithfulness to you, Lord. And Father in heaven, I also pray for the gate of the presidency. I know that the gate of the presidency has... Uh, inhabitants who love you and who want to represent the kingdom of Christ in Kenya above all things. And I believe that the powers of darkness in Kenya, the altars, the evil altars, are rising to fight uh, the current presidency because of that. But Father in heaven, I rebuke every rising of the enemy every storms, every flood that the enemy is coming in, but I rebuke it. Rise the waves and water and so forth, but Father, you're mightier than them all. Their Father asks you to calm the storm in Kenya. And Father, I pray for the rising of the church in Kenya with unity. Father, the false religions in Kenya that have blinded many, Father, I pray that you crush it because that is the work of the enemy. That's the work of the serpent, oh my God. Father, I pray that you take control and take charge, Lord. Father, thank you also for the African nails. Thank you for Pastor Jeff. But thank you for Pastor Susan and all the members who are praying right now. Father, I pray that you take care of us. We pray that you bless us. I pray that you take, I pray that you unite us and bless us in all ways and our families. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. How beautiful. Anyone else before we move on? This is, by the way, this is the heart of what we're going to be doing today. Um, we intercede, we pray. Praise God. There's number of you that are on the call today and we welcome your prayer if you have a prayer in your heart go ahead anyone else before we move on to the next slide go ahead praise god well let's then move to the next slide susan thank you Again, these are all teaching slides. I hope you'll get a copy of these. You will share these. Share these with your prayer teams. You can lift up Kenya every day of the year. You can lift up your own nation, modifying and just changing the name of Kenya to the name of your nation. It'll apply to that. And here's just a slide that has a beautiful prayer. I'll just read this into the record. You could have written this also, any one of you. You know, we are to pray for our leaders. We are pray, it points out in 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 to 3. 
It says, therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplication, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Does that need to happen in Kenya? Yes. In the United States? Yes. In South Africa and in Israel? Yes. Yes. In all godliness and reverence, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. And again, a point here that many leaders are corrupt, but we're still encouraged to pray. They get born again and follow God's ways to bring less blessings to the nation. Proverbs 14, 34 says, Godliness makes a nation great, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Yes, yes, yes. Proverbs eleven fourteen. without wise leadership, a nation falls. There's safety in having many advisors. So this is what, this is what the prayer reads. And again, get a copy of this. It says, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come to you today through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, because all power belongs to you. Thank you, because you always answer our prayers. We ask for forgiveness on behalf of our land and nation, Kenya. Forgive us for not walked in your ways. We repent for every wickedness, injustices, nepotism, racism, tribalism, hatred, bloodshed, idolatry, having not given you your rightful place in our nation. Wherever we've exalted any idol before you, forgive us, Lord. Father, have mercy. Remember mercy, O Lord. We contend for our country, O Lord. You say, ask of me for the nations. Lord, we ask for Kenya. Remember your people, Lord, those tossed, those oppressed by situations, starvation, thirst. O Lord, remember mercy and heal our land. Bring the latter rains of repentance revival, O Lord, we pray. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. We plead the blood of Jesus over this land. Let the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel speak peace. Lord, raise leaders that are after your heart, O Lord. Give us leaders chosen by you and let them be a vessel to bring this land back to the fear of you, O Lord. That's a healthy, beautiful fear. Let there be peace and love for one another. Any power thirsting for the blood of any Kenyan or illegal, let it be quenched by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we cancel violence. In Jesus' name, we decree peace prosperity, and blessings to this land. Let peace be upon Kenya and nations surrounding. Let peace be on the four corners around this great land. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. One other thought before we move to the next slide. Yes, yes, yes. The only antidote for sin is God's mercy through repentance with genuine godly sorrow. For a nation that repents shall be reborn out of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's all thanks to what Jesus Yeshua did. Changed by the power of the cross, exalted in righteousness. And as Christians, we have a responsibility to pray for our government, our leaders, our country, the whole process by which we elect leaders and get them in power. Praise God. Anyone have a specific prayer for Kenya as you were listening to that prayer? My brother in the Congo, do you want to add a prayer for Kenya? Go on ahead. Yes, let us pray for Kenya. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
We bless your name today. You are so good, God. We just humble ourselves before you and then we pray for Kenya. You know Kenya. You know the people of Kenya. Right now, I break the spirit of division in this country in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God, you may put people together so that people can develop this country. I'm praying for the government. I refuse the spirit of corruption in Kenya in the mighty name of Jesus. Let Kenya stand with you. Father, we are praying for the president. Father, I'm praying for all the nation. I know that there is nothing is impossible to you, O oh Lord. You can make peace in Kenya. The spirit of demonstration, I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let peace reign in Kenya. Kenya eat. We know that you are going to do something great for Kenya. Peace will be established in Kenya in the mighty name of Jesus. Today we declare victory in Kenya. We declare peace in Kenya in the mighty name of Jesus. Let people of Kenya enjoy the economy, enjoy the riches that you have given this country. I believe God, you are going to make a way for the, so that people can see great things happen right now. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer, brother. I love it when you get on. That was perfect. Thank you. Well, praise God. Praise God. Yes, now we're going to look at these declarations for Kenya. Having repented, now we are just going to declare this healing. We're going to speak light and life over Kenya. Yes, 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 yes. All these are prophecies. Look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. It applies today. This was written six, seven hundred years before Jesus. It speaks to you and me today, almost 3,000 years later. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shined. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just say, spread your light. Lord, you brought us light all over the planet. It's your planet. It's your universe. It's your stars. It's your creation. And you put mankind in your image, as it says in Genesis chapter one, in your likeness. Lord, we just pray that truth would be spread throughout the ecclesia in in kenya and light would be shining light would come alive light would be spoken light would be seen in the smile and the love and the giving in every child of god in kenya lord let them be all ambassadors of your light Look also at Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2. It says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Yes, that applies to everyone in Kenya that knows the Lord, that has come by repentance into the kingdom. You then become filled with the Holy Spirit. We are baptized with the Holy Spirit. You become a new creation in the Messiah. You are a different person. You are now dead to your old self. Now you are an ambassador of Christ, of the Messiah, bringing many into the kingdom. It says, arise and shine. Thy light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. And that's for every individual, for every nation. For behold, the darkness cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee his glory shall be seen upon thee yes lord i just uh, think it's going to happen go ahead brother what's on your heart 
Yes, you just said, was it that you just said amen? <laughs> or did you have another prayer in your heart for that specific declaration of light over Kenya? Light, the spiritual light. Well, let, let me continue reading, but at any point, come on, jump in. Again, in John, the wonderful book of John, chapter one, verses one to five, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was, was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Yes. Pastor Jeffrey, I just had a vision as you read Isaiah 60 and John 1. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I saw a very dark cloud over Kenya. And I saw Yeshua above the cloud in his glory. And he extended he took the glory cloud that he was in. And when you see a cloud, you know, when it's dark, and you see the little lights coming through the dark cloud, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what he was doing. He was just had his hands up from the glory cloud. He was sending rays of light, okay? And they were going throughout Kenya, through the darkness. And the light was coming through. The light was coming through. More light rays were coming in. More ray, more light rays were coming in. More, more, more were coming in. And then all of a sudden, he extended his hands in the glory cloud and released the glory cloud over Kenya. And the darkness was gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have seen this vision for Israel. Yeshua was in Mount Zion, and he was in the glory cloud. And he lifted up his hands, and I saw fire come out of his hands. And I saw a hundred-foot wall of fire around the borders of Israel. This is Zechariah 2.5. And he was in the glory cloud again. And this was a message we just did called Yeshua Arise in Your Glory. And again, he the glory cloud came across all of Israel, just like the children of Israel, fire by night, a cloud by day. But when Israel looked up, ha, they saw Yeshua in the glory cloud. When Kenya looks up, ha, they'll see Yeshua in the glory cloud. And then this glory cloud will come all across all of Africa. I prophesy in the name of Yeshua and mm -hmm. to America and all to the nations. Yeshua, oh yes, arise in your glory for such a time as this. Amen, amen, yes, 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 yes. Whoa, thank you, Stephen, thank you so much. And our brother, John is listening and he, I saw him clapping and smiling. Thank you, brother. Let me just also just state the obvious look again here at John 3, 19 to 21. This is the condemnation light it is come into the world. Yeah, we're talking 2000 years ago. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be reproved, but he that doeth truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. And then Matthew 5, 14 to 16, this applies to each one of you on the call here and each being, listen, as this is being recorded and live streamed, it says, you are the light of the world. This is Yeshua speaking to you and me today. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 
Neither do men light a candle, put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, he's talking to you, you put your name there, your light, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Yes, 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 yes. And then you know this beautiful statement from Jesus, John 8, 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And in 9.5, he says, John 9.5, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So, Lord, we just thank you. We speak light and life over Kenya. Lord, may it be this city on a hill, so to speak. Yes, you apply that to each of us individually, but let it also be true for that nation. Let it be a nation that stands apart from all other nations nearby that and in all of Africa, Lord. Let, just let it be the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of a nation that becomes truly godly, Lord. Let it be a light to the entire world not just Africa, to the whole world. I pray that in Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. Well, praise God, praise God. Anyone else have a prophetic word or anything like that as you see Kenya? What is the, God's destiny for Kenya? Has he shown you something even as we have had this focus on Kenya today? Lord, I think that applies to Kenya. Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lord, let that apply to the nation. All believers in Jesus Christ, let that apply to the whole nation. Yes, yes, yes. Let the good works let the light be shown and bring the entire nation into that place of light instead of darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Here again, this is a declaration time. Anyone uh, can... Add to this, I'm just going to read this into the record because this has been on our heart. You can get a copy of these declarations and pray with your prayer team. We know this is just a blessing because whenever we intercede and we make these declarations, the Lord himself is blessed. It says in Romans 8, 26, the spirit helps in our weakness we don't know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered. So one declaration is that shepherds in the house of God throughout Kenya will discover and exemplify the gift of repentance and will bear fruit worthy of repentance. Yes, that's straight out of Matthew 3. Verse 8, John the Baptist, bear fruits worthy. Let them show that you've repented. Bear fruit worthy of repentance as a witness to many so that many will come into his kingdom. And Lord, we declare there will be a healthy spirit of repentance for all the ways through which black and white suffered in the nation. And Lord, we declare godly men and women will come forward to serve as public servants and advocate publicly for laws following God's word. Lord, I declare that God's spirit of life will prevail in its citizens and its laws. And Lord, we, and I declare that God's spirit of truth will prevail in its citizens and its laws. 
and that the kingdom of God will be preached and all will press into it. That's Luke 16, 16. Lord, I declare that you, the living God, will be feared. There will be a healthy fear, like it says in Acts chapter 9. I think it's verse 31. A healthy fear. That's why that first church multiplied, it says there in that verse. A living fear, a healthy fear of you, Lord, and that corruption will be exposed and rejected. Idols and witchcraft will be abandoned. And Lord, I pray that and declare that your plan for Kenya will go forward as a light to other nations. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Anyone else have a declaration on your heart? Be bold for Christ. In Ephesians 6, 19 and 20, Paul asks for boldness. It's good to be bold in a declaration. We heard some from Stephen today, a man bold for Christ, bold for the Messiah. Anyone else have a declaration for Kenya? Go ahead. Well then, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Now I want you to look, if you're still looking at the graphics here, look at the face of this guy. He's just repented. He's just got rid of some major old sin pattern. We don't even need to know what it was, but he got rid of it. Maybe it was anger. Maybe it was jealousy. Maybe it was alcohol and drugs. Maybe it was woman, womanizing. Maybe it was division, um, competition with other pastors. God knows what it was, but he got rid of it by being in repentance. And it gives you a spiritual freedom that you can't get in the world. You can get occasional happiness in the world. You know, you see your grandchild or something like that. Okay, that's nice. But nothing compared to the deep joy that you get when you cleanse spiritually. And you and I need to teach people how to just get rid of an old pattern that's no longer needed because the word of God and the blood of God covers you. You're cleansed. You're cleansed. You're a new clean vessel of his light wherever you go, wherever you talk, wherever you uh, interact with people. They see the light in your eyes. They see the truth in your words. And this also fits Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. It says, and they overcame him. That includes, that's the devil, Satan. They overcame him. Satan, by the blood of the lamb, that's number one, and by the word of their testimony, well, that can be the word of the eternal word of God, the Bible, all 66 books. It can also mean the word of your private testimony. That is a way by which you overcame Satan. All of our testimonies overcome him, and that permits us not to love our lives to the death. What can Satan do to us? Nothing. So we have overcome him by the word of your testimony. Praise God. Anyone have a testimony as this time of repentance in this day, focusing on Kenya today? Go on ahead if you have a testimony of what this time of uh, repentance and prayer has been. Go ahead if you have something. It's a little different than a typical church service. <laughs> I can say as having been a pastor for a long time, it's important to give people time to repent. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's look at the next slide. Here's who we are. I hope you will keep us up in prayer. 
We're doing days of repentance. We did one for South Africa a couple of weeks ago. We did one for the United States a couple of months ago. We will be doing one for Israel, God willing, in another month. So there's no shortage of needs for days of repentance in your own nation of the Congo, of Malawi, of Zimbabwe, Liberia, Morocco, or the nation of France or Germany or Russia or Ukraine, Finland, Fiji. There's no place where there's not repentance needed. So I pray you will get excited about God's gift of repentance. You will keep us in prayer for provision also, because no church, no denomination, no foundation, no big global company or something is in charge here. We're just volunteers. Susan is a volunteer. I am a volunteer. And then from time to time, people send in a donation. That in turn means I can donate to other pastors, many of whom are in Africa, but others are in the Philippines, in Sri Lanka, in Pakistan, in India. We don't we make donations to pastors who, um, with, with funds already donated to us. And you can go to our website. It's www.repentday.com or www.globalrepent.com. Either one of those places you can learn more about our mission of repentance God's gift of repentance, and you can make a donation. The fruit will abound to your account, as it says in Philippians 4.17. And by the way, we get donations. I'm pretty sure when people give us their testimony, a pastor gives a testimony of how repentance is breaking out in their community, in their nation. However, the Lord is moving through them. So share your testimonies with Susan or with me. At, you can reach Susan at hammersusan1 at gmail.com or me at pastorjeff at repentday.com. We would love to get your testimony. And you can start your own repentance group. You can We can send you for free a way by which you can just hold a it's like a Bible study. You can bring a couple people together and go through. We go through the seven abominations of Proverbs 6, getting rid of the proud look, getting rid of the person who has that spirit of lying, etc. Those seven different abominations to the Lord. They can all be removed in privacy, in private. And if someone wants to share, they can. But it's a wonderful way to grow in Christ and to cleanse as his bride. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Now, does someone have a closing prayer? Because we are so thankful to the Lord. He loves us. Our sins are forgiven. We're encouraged to walk in his character. And uh, if you got a prayer also, do include the prayer of protection. No retaliation by the enemy. Blessings to you and to your family until we next gather for repentance. Who's got a prayer, a closing prayer in your heart here? Uh, go ahead, brother. Praise God. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for the meeting today. And also I thank God for the airwaves that have been clear. I thank God for each and everyone who just set aside his time to stand with Kenya. Surely the prayers of our righteous are violated much. Right now I can assure you that from the cloud that our brother Stephen saw, coming on the planet, on the country Kenya, I can feel in the spirit there is calm in the land. There is even the, the tone that has been going on in the parliament. It means 
God has heard our prayer and there is what we call an, uh, a revival coming in the land. So I'm just celebrating this day that God has done it. Thank you so much. May God bless you. May God minister to each and everyone for being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Let us just believe and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the shower of blessing you are releasing in, on our land, Kenya. We thank you for the remnant that you have raised in this land. As your word in Isaiah 18 verse 3, that you are raising a banner in Africa, which is going to bring the light to the four corners of this country. We thank you for our servants, Dion, for the prophecy you gave unto this land. We thank you for our brothers, Stephen. We thank you for Jeff Daly. We thank you for Susan. We thank you for Kazembe. We thank you for Edward. We thank you for brother Jimmy, for the dream you gave him, and Jehovah you are bringing it to pass. We thank you for our sister Carol, who is standing in the gap in the land in Kakamega. We thank you for each and every one, Lord, even those from Zambia, uh, Malawi, Tanzania, South Africa, Botswana, Nigeria, and other parts of the world. Lord, we are praying that let this revival transform the land and the nation of the world. We honor you for what you are doing, that may you continue to speak life in each and every one, Lord. Let us arise, for the glory of God has come. Give all the glory and honor, for in the name of Jesus, we believe and pray, and everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. amen. Pastor Jeff, I have a prayer for Kenya, Africa, and Israel, if I may. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Hallelujah, Elohe Abraham, ki leolam chasto. Praise be the God of Abraham. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, Elohe Yitzhak, ki leolam chasto. Praise be the God of Isaac. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, Elohe Israel. Ki leolam chasdo. Praise be the God of Israel. His mercy endures forever. And when Elijah said that exact prayer at the time of the evening sacrifice, the fire came down and consumed the sacrifice that was immersed in water. All of Israel fell upon their face and said, Adonai is lord holy spirit we are asking now for a fire hotter than it was in the days of elijah to come across kenya to come across africa to come across israel to come across the nations and to ignite your ecclesia and the prophets of Baal were destroyed so let the spirit of Baal be destroyed. Let the spirit, the Antichrist Jesus. spirit, rebellion be destroyed. Spirit of Cain, we bind you and send you to the pit of hell. We cut off the Goliath spirit. We cut off the Leviathan spirit. We cut Hallelujah. off octopus spirit we cut off every wickedness in high places because yes. the battle is not the flesh and blood Amen. but the principalities powers and rulers in high places we call to you elohim we call yes. to yahweh we call Whoa. to you jehovah to send the mighty angels michael gabriel uriel Rachel, and the heavenly host to send forth the heavenly praisers to go and declare war on the enemy we prophesy saw Paul conversions in Kenya. And Lord, we prophesy Muslims for Yeshua, Buddhists yes. for Yeshua, Hindus yes. for Yeshua, Buddhists yes. for Yeshua, the house of Hallelujah. Israel for Yeshua. Yeshua, visit the house of Israel. Yeshua, save the house of Israel. Yeshua, deliver the house of Israel. Yeshua, protect the house of Israel. Yeshua, redeem the house of Israel. Yeshua, restore the house of 
of Israel. You shall revive the house of Israel. Elohim, Lion of Judah, Holy mm. Spirit, Lord of God, one, go into Gaza and bring back the hostages. Break the yes. spirit of division in Kenya. Break the spirit of division in Africa. Break the spirit of division in America. Break the spirit of division in Israel. How pleasing it is to the Lord when we dwell in unity. We prophesy fresh tongues of fire now across Kenya, Africa, and all the nations in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. And thank you so much. And also, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. We also got a very nice uh, chat here from John Bishop. We thank you, brother, for your kind comment. He says, thank you all. What a beautiful ministry, a body of believers. I'm excited to report of this great new discovery to the visionary of the CFM ministry, Dr. John Lucamuz. And uh, it's a breath of fresh air to be united with serious like-minded believers in whom there's no guile. Yes, thank you, brother. May the Father continue to bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you and grant you peace, patience, and comfort. Uh, nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And I speak favor and refreshing upon you all. The fire of the spirit encompass you everywhere you go. And may it be unto you as it's written in the scrolls of your destiny. And in Jesus name, amen. And uh, Pastor P.S. Panther Anthony, thank you for the invite, sir. I hope to be in touch and connect and accelerate the kingdom together. Be blessed. CFM Chairman, Minister, your eternal brother, John F. Bishop. How beautiful. Thank you, brother. And Sabita says, Amen. Praise God. Well, shalom, everyone. Shalom, everyone. This was a powerful, powerful meeting. <laughs> and guess what tomorrow is? African eels. Lord, just Pour this again all over Africa. Keep the momentum going, Lord. Keep it going. The light is shining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Jimmy Ogwang. Thank you, everyone who's been aboard here. Pastor Anthony. Yes. Thank yes. you. Shalom, shalom. Uh, Jeffrey, on. can I release the bump, bump, bump song? Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> the okay. joy of the Lord is your strength. Bump, bump, bump. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Bump, bump, bump. The Lord has put a new song in your heart. Bump, bump, bump. The Lord has put a new song in our heart. Bump, bump, bump. The Lord has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Hey! The joy of the Lord is your strength, bum, bum, bum. The joy of the Lord is our strength, bum, bum, bum. The Lord has put a new song in your heart, bum, bum, bum. The Lord has put a new song in our hearts, bum, bum, bum. We can do all things through Yeshua who strengthens us. Ah. We can do all things through Jesus who strengthens us. The joy of the Lord is your strength, bum, bum, bum. The joy of the Lord is our strength, bum, bum, bum. The Lord has put a new song in your heart, bum, bum, bum. The Lord has put a new song in our heart, bum, bum, bum. We got the bum, 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 but we have yes. Yeshua and Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Yes and amen. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, yes. yes. Praise. Um, 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 um.
<laughs> Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Shalom. Until tomorrow. Praise God. Yes. Blessing, same times. Thank you, Sarah. I mean, Shalom. thank you, Shalom. Susan, for the amazing job you did today. And Jeffrey, I'm telling you, the Lord is smiling on both of you and Dion. Just receiving <laughs> open heaven and open heaven over all of us. I know the Lord is happy, happy, happy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Many blessings. Shalom. Yes. Shalom. Same time tomorrow. Bye bye. Same time tomorrow. Here we go. Same time tomorrow. <laughs> bam bam. <laughs> <laughs>